Dear ladies and gentlemen, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar for our group. I am Simona Bochkiene, an account manager at Nasdaq Vilnius, and I am to introduce today's hosts, Mr. Kestutis Yushchus, the Chief Executive Officer of the Auger Group, Mr. Vintogas Ambrasas, the Chief Financial Officer of the company, and Mr. Amantas Gudonis, the Head of Finance Department. Before we proceed with the presentation, I will shortly introduce you with the agenda. Firstly, the management of the company will come financial results of the first quarter of 2020 and guide us through the recent company. Right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions. Please note that a couple of questions were received in advance and those will be covered during the presentation under the certain topics. So on this note, let's begin. Dear guests, I invite you to start the presentation. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, thank you very much for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, and um, uh, I'm Kestutis Yushus, uh, CEO of the company Our Group. And uh, first of all, I would like to, to present our uh, main major uh, news uh, is uh, not only first quarter results uh, from 2020, but uh, also we want to pre introduce the most, the largest, uh, biggest news in our company is uh, presented new company strategy 2025. Um, the company in 2015, uh, we made the strategic decision to switch to organic farming and to produce organic products. And uh, we have a slogan uh, to produce our products in the most sustainable way, organic products in the most sustainable way. Uh, we have now a new, a new vision of the company to, to become a synonym of uh, sustainable food and health life. Uh, so we would like to be in the markets where AUGA will be presented, to be uh, people and consumers will, uh, will um, uh, the AUGA brand will be for them same uh, to be a sustainable life. And the uh, mission, uh, we have a new mission uh, published. It says deliver organic food uh, with no cost, uh, cost to nature. And it's uh, quite ambitious. Uh, we have targets to how to reduce uh, our emissions from farming. Actually, everybody maybe knows who is more related to sustainability issues that uh, uh, farming itself is uh, generating 23% of uh, uh, CNG gases, uh, which is actually one of the largest polluters in the world. And we want uh, our strategies address it, uh, how to decrease uh, these emissions, how to develop technology which will be used uh, in not only in our not only in our farms, but also the cooperation with uh, smaller uh, smaller former farmers. Um, we published the new strategy in the April of this year. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, a month later, in May, the European Commission also announced the new strategy called it from farm to fork, which is addressing a lot of same main challenges of sustainable food systems that Alga is talking about. For example, among the EU, EU strategy goals to achieve by 2030 is to reduce CO2 emissions by 50%, to reach uh, that 25% of all uh, EU, EU, Euro Commission, Euro, Europe uh, agricultural land uh, would be organic. Uh, the moment uh, currently the rate is only 7.7 and to reduce the use of chemical and pesticide by 50 percent. Uh, by the way, restrictions on chemicals and pesticides uh, would affect the cost structure and efficiency of, of conventional farms and reduce this ability to compete with imports to, to Europe, uh, Europe Union. All of this good news for Alga because our new strategy is in line with EU strategy. And while the industry is still discussing the impact of these new initiatives and possible re regulations, we know how to achieve it and have a plan how Alga will be more efficient and more sustainable, and how we will achieve our missions to deliver organic food with no cost to nature. Um, I encourage you to look at our strategy, uh, our strategy presentation, and read uh, more about the new EU strategy by clicking the links uh, provided here. And uh, now I would like to pass the word to the new CFO of our group, Menduka Samrosas, who will tell you more about the results of the first quarter. Thank you and good morning. 
So uh, from the future, let's go back to present and then talk about results of the first quarter of uh, 2020. And uh, we would like to start uh, our presentation uh, from the question, uh, which I think is very important uh, for all of us. So how the activity of the company, how financial results were affected uh, by COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, we already had an announcement about the effect of the virus on our activity some time ago. So I, I uh, just can only reaffirm that uh, in short, medium term, we really don't uh, think that there will be significant negative effect uh, of the virus on our activities uh, and uh, results. And uh, <clears throat> this is uh, due to mainly, uh, as you know, uh, agriculture production uh, is uh, usually uh, least affected by uh, crisis and situations like this. Uh, so now we already have uh, latest data to see how the virus affected not only agricultural business, but uh, which is maybe more important for us, organic agricultural business. Uh, so you can see in, in the slide in the presentation uh, how, uh, what were the changes in uh, German market, which is uh, the biggest market for us. Uh, and if we see, and if we talk about changes in total retail market and total organic market in March 2020, comparing to March 2019, as you can see, there were quite significant growth in total market, but at the same time, growth of organic market was even larger. And I think it's uh, quite uh, reasonable to, to, to see why, uh, because usually in situations like this, uh, everyone starts to, to think more about uh, health and, and nutrition. And secondly, all of us spend quite a lot of time at home uh, during the last couple of months. So when you make food at home, you usually tend to use more organic uh, products. Um, talking more about the uh, effect of, of, uh, of the virus on, on the group and the company, uh, of course, we had to implement uh, quite uh, a few uh, things to ensure safety, safety of our employees. And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, up to date, we don't have any uh, employees, uh, the virus in, in our group. So all, all the companies of the group, uh, they work in full capacity. We didn't have uh, major issues uh, with logistics uh, or supp supply chain. So generally, it's really business as normal for us uh, in the last couple of months. To be more specific uh, on, 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 uh, on the fact, uh, uh, we even had some business areas which had posit affected positively because of all the situation. For example, uh, our products with long uh, shelf life as uh, soups, uh, milk, we see really an increased demand for products like this. Uh, at the same time, uh, some business areas, of course, were affected negatively. And uh, uh, one example could be uh, our mushroom business. We have a small part of sales which go to the customers which are dealing uh, directly with Horeca. So, of course, uh, this uh, had very negative effect uh, and all those sales almost went to zero. But still, in total, uh, decrease in, in this segment was fully compensated by increase of sales in retail market, and we still had a positive change in, in, in Martian segment as well. So uh, just to sum up, uh, uh, we don't uh, see a reason to believe that uh, virus uh, would have a negative effect on, on our activities and the results in, uh, let's say, short and medium term. It's really difficult to say about longer perspective because there are still uncertainties about the virus itself, about the total economical environment. But in medium term, we don't see any negative effects. And uh, it definitely didn't have negative effect on uh, results of first quarter. So just to prove that, let's go to the figures. And as you can see, uh, I think I could say that we are quite optimistic about uh, results of the first quarter because we have uh, growth in, in revenues. Uh, uh, if we compare uh, first quarter of 2020 with uh, 2019, so it was a growth of 14% in revenues, uh, growth in uh, gross and net profit by 27 and 6%. 
and growth in EBITDA by 8% in, in the first quarter of uh, this year comparing to last uh, year. And I think the most important thing uh, is that we really see improvements, uh, not in total numbers only, but in all uh, four major segments uh, we operate. So uh, to continue, uh, we would like uh, to, to go in detail and tell you more about uh, every segment we operate to give you some insights on the market situation and the trends and also to comment on financial uh, numbers uh, in every segment uh, we work. So just uh, to start uh, uh, from crop growing, um, in general, um, we saw that uh, prices uh, had decreased uh, for our main product, uh, uh, wheat, uh, in the last 12 months. And though historically we didn't see a correlation between uh, conventional and organic uh, prices, in the last uh, 12 months we saw that uh, trends were quite similar. So uh, prices for conventional wheat uh, decreased by 9% in average year on year uh, in the first quarter. So uh, if we uh, talk about uh, prices uh, our selling uh, is wheat, so we also had decrease uh, of 8% in average in the first quarter 2020. How this affected our results uh, in crop growing? Uh, talking about results, uh, maybe we should also explain that uh, the result of crop growing uh, really comes from three inputs. Uh, and and uh, uh, let's talk about them uh, separately. So first of all, of course, uh, our harvest uh, and the and, uh, uh, value of our crops. Uh, so uh, this year, uh, total cultivated land increased uh, slightly uh, to almost 40,000 hectares. Uh, and uh, really good news uh, from, from our side is that, uh, as you all know, the other conditions were quite good uh, for agriculture this year. So because of that, uh, uh, our uh, fair value of, of, of uh, a fair value gain of our crops uh, uh, from sowing uh, is uh, higher by 1.4 million uh, euros comparing to last year. Uh, so uh, talking about uh, the situation with uh, harvest, uh, up to date we have, uh, have quite a good uh, situation and we expect uh, harvest uh, for this season uh, would be much uh, better comparing to the results of the last couple of years. Second uh, part of, of the result comes from uh, uh, sales of uh, uh, from sales. So sales increased by 80% in the first quarter comparing to last year, and this was mainly affected by sales of uh, rape seeds uh, for almost 700,000 euros, and we didn't have uh, sales of rape seeds uh, last year. And the third part is of course subsidies, uh, which we have in I would say similar level than year, uh, last year. So in total, uh, gross uh, profit of crop growing segment increased by 4% and reached almost 3 million euros for first quarter of 2020. Uh, going to dairy uh, segment, um, we uh, have, uh, uh, if we talk about uh, conventional uh, prices, of con uh, prices of conventional products, we usually look at the German uh, market as an indicator because it's, it's, it's the largest market for us and it's the largest market in Europe. So as you can see, for the last uh, 12 months, uh, the price of uh, conventional raw milk uh, decreased slightly. Uh, but if we talk about organic uh, price, the uh, situation is uh, slightly different and the price uh, in the last 12 months, uh, it remained uh, really stable. Uh, and if we talk about the uh, price of uh, uh, raw milk uh, we are selling, so as you can see from the graph, uh, we really had very good trend uh, and the price really was growing uh, for, for the last uh, year. And the reason is obvious, and you can see this from the second graph in the presentation, uh, we managed to increase the uh, share of uh, milk we are selling as uh, organic uh, quite significantly during the last 12 months. 
so I can share good news that uh, just recently in April, we sold 100% of our milk uh, as organic. So uh, we really believe that we will be able to continue this uh, trend and keep a uh, share of, of organic milk sold in, in similar level in the future. And there are uh, reasons to, to believe so. Uh, just recently in, in April, we also received, I would say, long awaited uh, certificate from China. So now we can sell uh, raw milk and commodity products from the raw milk as organic products in Chinese market as well. So of course, this gives us additional flexibility and additional opportunities uh, to, to, to work in different markets. Uh, so that's why, as I said, we really are confident that we will be able to maintain very high percentage of uh, our milk sold as organic. And uh, as a result, uh, we really had, after some periods, we really had very positive change when we talk about the results of our dairy segment. So uh, for the first quarter of 2010, it's already generating gross profit. And there are several factors uh, why the situation has changed. First of all, as I already told you, uh, yes, we in managed to increase uh, part of uh, organic uh, milk uh, in our sales quite significantly. If we just compare the figures, so this ratio grew from 55% in average in 2019 uh, to 86 uh, in 2020. Secondly, uh, uh, yield of the milk uh, increased by 5% in the first quarter uh, comparing to last year. Uh, and we also were positively affected by reduction of costs. And uh, another thing we did, uh, we did some changes in our internal accounting. So generally, uh, now we calculate all the subsidies uh, which are related to dairy uh, as in, in this segment. Uh, it was uh, not so previously, uh, but we also uh, re recalculated historical figures. So uh, in, in this table, you just uh, uh, you can compare uh, the same uh, figures uh, year on year. Um, so in total, uh, we achieved a gross profit of 80,000 uh, in the uh, first quarter, comparing to loss of almost 230,000 last year which is really a good uh, step forward. And uh, we really believe that we will be able to maintain this trend uh, in uh, having a high share of organic price, uh, growing uh, yield and, and uh, being able to control the costs in the future uh, for this year as well. Um, mushroom growing segment, I would say it's, uh, the easiest and the most difficult to present uh, uh, for the same reason, because uh, it's really a segment which is uh, which shows really stable results for uh, many years. Uh, so it's from one side, it's not a lot to tell, uh, but maybe in some situations it's really good. Uh, so uh, just looking at the figures of the segment, uh, we see that we managed to, to have a better harvest uh, and produce uh, more mushrooms in the first quarter uh, of this year comparing to last year. And uh, though we had small decrease in average price, but you know, 2%, uh, it really it just maybe some small changes, but uh, I, I don't think that's, that's a trend. But at the same time, having slightly smaller price, we managed to decrease uh, production costs just because of bigger volumes. And this gave us really positive uh, results. So we achieved a gross profit of uh, more than 600,000 euros uh, in the first quarter, comparing to uh, 300,000 euros a year ago. Um, as I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, this segment was slightly affected uh, by uh, coronavirus. Uh, so uh, uh, we, we had some... Uh, decrease in sale to Horeca sector, which was compensated by retail sales. And we also uh, had uh, some effect on sales of uh, our compost. So one, two customers uh, in Russia, they just uh, stopped uh, the activity for some time. Uh, and, and this, of course, had a negative effect on uh, sales of, uh, of compost. 
but still uh, sales of compost uh, we, uh, we constitute quite a small part of uh, total uh, result of, of the segment so we didn't manage to have a negative a total effect on, on, on the results. Um, so we don't uh, foresee any uh, other changes or significant changes in nearest future and, and I believe that the segment will continue to show uh, good results in the remaining months of, of, of the year as well. Um, and consumer products, uh, this is uh, the segment uh, we saw the biggest growth in, in, in recent uh, months and the uh, first quarter of 2020 continued the trend. As you can see, uh, revenues grew by almost 80% in the first quarter. And uh, it's really good to see when, uh, when we managed to, to achieve almost the same sales in the first quarter this year, what we did in almost the uh, first half of the year uh, last year. Um, the growth uh, really comes from all the markets we are working in. Uh, but I would say the biggest effect uh, was uh, from start of uh, selling to US market in autumn 2019. So big part of growth comes uh, from, from this market. And if we talk about uh, the main products or revenue structure, it really remains the same. So generally, uh, soups, uh, preserved mushrooms, we still account for almost uh, half of, of the sales uh, in, in this segment. We really have lots of expectations uh, for, for, for this segment, and we still believe that the growth, this, uh, 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 growth will continue. Um, and there, we have several reasons to believe so. Uh, first of all, uh, as maybe you saw from, from our early announcements, uh, we started working with whole food markets in the uh, USA, which is the largest uh, specialized retailer of organic uh, products in, in, in US. So now our products you can find in shelves of, of this uh, retail chain. Secondly, we have successful uh, growth of cooperation in the uh, United Arab Emirates, and, and we see potential there. And lastly, it was announced last week uh, that uh, Auger Group uh, acquired full control of um, cooperative company Gribelte, which already provides us production uh, services for, for our preserved products. So now having full control of, of the company will allow us uh, to be, I would say, faster, more efficient, and uh, from from uh, business side and will also have a small positive effect uh, on consolidated results on from financial side. Uh, so uh, just going uh, to financial results uh, as i said in the very beginning we are really quite uh, optimistic uh, about uh, increased sales uh, profits and ebitda for the first quarter uh, of 2020 uh, results uh, didn't have a significant change on our uh, financial ratios, um, but uh, we are really looking positively to, to results of this, this year. As it was already mentioned a couple of times, uh, we have really good situation the weather this season, and uh, we believe that uh, we will be able to achieve uh, much better yields uh, than we had in the last couple of years. And as we calculated in 2019, uh, our result uh, could have been better by almost 7 million euros in EBITDA if uh, uh, we didn't have those really unusual uh, bad weather conditions we had uh, last year. So uh, outlook for, for, for this year is really quite positive at the moment, and, and, and we are really looking forward to, to the results. Uh, last year, uh, last uh, slide is just information about our uh, shares. Maybe I don't comment that much uh, on the price uh, of the shares. Uh, you all know uh, turbulences in, in the financial markets and what effect they had on prices of all uh, assets in, in, in all countries. But I think the good thing uh, and the good news we would like to share and, and note that what we see that we really see increasing number of shareholders and even in the first quarter or first four months uh, of 2020 we had uh, growth by almost 15 percent in number of shareholders 
and of course a bigger number of shareholders uh, gives uh, and creates uh, better liquidity for, for the shares uh, to everyone in, in the market. And uh, just to, to, to finish the presentation, uh, as always, uh, uh, you can find all the detailed information uh, in Excel format in, in our uh, internet page. I would also encourage everyone to subscribe to our newsletter, newsletter so you would get all the latest news from our group. Uh, uh, and if, of course, you have any questions, you can see my contacts and feel free to contact. So thank you. Mr. Ambroses, Mr. Yushis, thank you very much for your presentation. Now we will proceed with the questions. So dear participants, you can send in your questions in the section on the right side of the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe just to start, uh, I think we uh, had a few questions uh, we received uh, just before the pr presentation, but I believe uh, we managed to answer all of them uh, during the presentation. Uh, we also received a couple of uh, questions during the presentation, so we, we will try to answer uh, them right now. Okay, so in some parts in Eastern Europe, there has been several droughts so that will severely impact the harvest. How has, has it been uh, in Lithuania? What are your expectations? Um, yes, uh, Lithuania had uh, quite a dry month, which is, was April, uh, and there was a little bit uh, negative impact on winter crops, uh, but uh, nevertheless, in, in, in May, uh, actually, uh, we, we got uh, quite uh, enough uh, rain. Uh, in in the in the in the, our older farmland we we, we grow and uh, for summer crops uh, we we see good uh, conditions here and uh, and winter crops uh, are looking now also good or even or better like last uh, previous year so we expect uh, good harvest uh, average or both average harvest uh, this season here in Lithuania. Uh, what could be the COVID effect, uh, negative uh, effect uh, for mushroom segment in the uh, second quarter of 2020? So at the moment, uh, mushrooms, uh, mushroom producing companies are producing on 100% and uh, we have full loaded uh, capacities. Uh, we can't say you exactly what will be a cost structure, the price structure, because it's still the quarter is not finished yet. But we don't see big uh, disturbances in their markets, and uh, uh, like always, the mushrooms uh, probably will be quite stable uh, segment also for second quarter. And we don't expect uh, big uh, differences uh, in the mushroom segment for second quarter also. Thank you very much for your answer. We are still waiting for more questions. Um, uh, we do not, do not hear about uh, your plans uh, to go to new markets during this next year. What about export sales in the future? Um, uh, actually, we uh, we actually don't want to go to all the global market with our products and uh, to be to sell uh, sp split our sales in small numbers uh, and 
every every market specification is cost uh, cost uh, monies and uh, cost uh, marketing costs. Uh, so we are concentrated on the uh, we open at the gate uh, to United States market uh, la end of the last year, and uh, we see the, the potential huge potential here to grow and to, to sell our products and use our products here in the United States markets. Uh, but uh, the same, uh, we actually doing more sales here, also stable, uh, enlarging sales here in Baltic states where we sell our home market. And um, uh, like we said also before, in every segment, the Chinese we just got uh, received a Chinese or uh, Chinese century for organic uh, product, for organic milk, and uh, this allows us to, to start in opening uh, Chinese markets uh, step by step. At the moment, there are maybe no there are no big requirement uh, for this Chinese market because uh, we are already we are close to 100% of sales of organic uh, milk. Uh, but uh, uh, we want to secure the, also our sales in different areas and uh, to be always 100% uh, sure that we can sell uh, our milk products with premium prices. Um, okay, oh, what about 60 million euros green bond issuing program? When are you going to issue them? What collateral will you pledge? Um, I think that uh, the Corona and COVID uh, extremely impacted uh, the financial sector and uh, and financial sector uh, is, is now is a big disturbance here in the market and uh, we don't hurry up uh, with this uh, bond program and uh, we're looking at what are possibilities here, uh, how to maybe, we actually looking forward to how to arrange a long-term financing for our group uh, and could be bonds, could be bank loans, could be uh, could be different products, uh, but uh, with the, the bond program uh, at the moment uh, we don't think that it's a good, uh, a good moment uh, because uh, we don't see uh, request uh, for this kind of papers uh, in, in the market, and uh, we, will call, we will come back uh, to this, uh, this to this uh, program. Uh, then we'll see how how the markets uh, will be. Uh, maybe second part of this year. Yeah, Thank you. Just to sum up uh, the question yes. about bonds uh, is that uh, we don't have specific plans, but it's still one of the options uh, when we look into all the possibilities in the autumn. Thank you very much for your answers and comments. Dear listeners, if you haven't sent in your question yet, please do so now. Uh, I would like uh, to a little bit before there are no questions uh, to uh, everybody to to that everybody looks in our just publish it on uh, on Nasdaq uh, the page our uh, investor uh, investors presentation the new one the investor presentations uh, where we you will see our not only our strategical uh, strategical uh, achievements in sustainability area and also what we want how to we want to reduce our uh, CO2 emissions, but uh, here is also published more or less uh, how we're looking for our EBITDA potential uh, to 2023. We call it uh, efficiency agenda, and we call it uh, strategical, uh, uh, strategical uh, uh, short-term goals. And um, in in this uh, published uh, information, uh, we we are we are in the, we plan it also um, amounts of investments we want uh, to invest in the next uh, 3.5 years and uh, what kind of results we 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 will we could have if uh, these investments will be made and uh, what kind of uh, 
uh, what kind of uh, capacities in EBITDA generation from our company uh, will be placed here. And also important to mention here is, is uh, this, these numbers are related not uh, to our R&D results. So R&D is uh, uh, activity which we are investing every day. So it's, it's uh, a little bit on top. Uh, on this, what we, we will be published, it's more related to the company efficiency agenda where uh, and how we want uh, to, uh, to improve our efficiency on the existing uh, existing uh, existing platform uh, which we have uh, and how we want in, in all the segments uh, and you will see the split in between the segments also. Um, European Union Green Deal, how it will affect AUGA? Actually, it's a good question. Uh, so we published our strategy in April uh, into, and uh, your Green Deal uh, for farming uh, is actually published at Farm to Fork strategy. It is published at last week uh, here uh, in Europe Commission. And um, it's actually, it's just, uh, it's, the Europe Commission is, is uh, getting a, a trend uh, where uh, the farming must move. It's actually seeing a trend and Alga knows how to make it. So this is uh, uh, the strategy is completely in line what Alga does, uh, how we're planning to, to perform in future. And uh, also important to mention that a lot of uh, European Commission's uh, uh, how to say support uh, will move to the strategy. And uh, for example, uh, 25% of uh, organic farming uh, is planted uh, till 2030 uh, in Europe. In Europe, so it's just, uh, the soil, uh, uh, the farming area must grow 3.5 times from existing uh, farmland area. So probably here uh, it will be also allocated resources, allocated supports, allocated programs, and uh, it's positively affect uh, the, the sector where Auga uh, is active at the moment. And uh, it's super important in this situation that AUGA in the sustainability aspect is not only about organic, the sustainability aspect, it's uh, even more priority versus only organic. And, um, and uh, here uh, our R&D technologies which we're developing at the moment will be very, very a hot topic uh, for uh, if, if this strategy uh, European commissions will, do, will, will want uh, to implement on a, on a real base. Thank you very much for your answer. Let's wait a couple of seconds for the last question to come. Well, it seems that there are no more questions. On behalf of Nasdaq Vilnius, thank you everyone. It was a pleasure being with you today. Record of the presentation will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel webinar playlist and on the website of the company auga.lt. Mr. Kastutis Yushus and Mr. Mendogas Ambrosas, thank you very much for your presentation and for answers given. Participants, thank you for joining. Everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.